Okay. Okay. Um, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طبعا it's always a pleasure أبقى وسط حضراتك وسط أساتذتي الكرام it's uh, أشكر محد الأب دكتور هاني بي طبعا thank you so much و guidelines are so big يعني what we want to take from guidelines are really important points مش هناخد what are the class of recommendations or أيمن uh, هو okay the history of dual antiplatelet therapy ابتدت 21 years ago with the Iser study and the teclopidin will aspirin are the first uh, it was the first trial to use dual antiplatelet therapy and it improved mortality all over the years so here bas al manzar yuriko how much antiplatelet therapy when combined aspirin and others p2y12 inhibitors have improved and how many trials were used this is incredible Fa there are so many points when we're talking about antiplatelet therapy. What's new for guidelines? Kaman is Senedi can a risk stratification of a patient. Why do we give antiplatelet dual antiplatelet therapy to decrease ischemic burden, to decrease thrombotic burden? We can see two scores. Wadahid Saidha, lower DAPT score. Biahud certain criteria as age, smoking, diabetes, previous myocardial infarction, others and others. If I get a score above two, that shows in an allowed to wilt out longer duration of dual antiplatelet therapy it is good or it is better another score which is the precision the apt score be put into consideration other things like hemoglobin white blood cell count creatinine clearance and with a long shorter duration of uh, dual antiplatelet therapy if the score is high here above 25. Taban, the kula of car. Like in none of these were used in randomized controlled trials for long. As in a class of recommendation, yes, you should think about them, but it's to be. It, they were not used as a long term randomized clinical trials. Acute coronary syndromes, the number one killer in the world. Al Fikra, uh, by data, nearly 10 million people worldwide require dual antiplatelet therapy, whether it's for an acute coronary syndrome, a stable uh, PCI so many indications or even now a very common thing which is the lead the lower extremity arterial disease which is very common in acute chronic syndromes there was not a lot of changes really dual antiplatelet therapy at least for one year and the preferred drug the preferred drugs are the ticagrelor or prasugrel, prasugrel only if you have a coronary anatomy that you're going to do and the patient's not going to be rushed into bypass surgery this is really important. And one year. Of course, if we have a bleeding complication in a patient, we can reduce this duration in certain patients. This is a class 2B, not recommended, which is really important for acute chronic syndromes, whether interventionally managed, whether by bypass surgery, whether by medical treatment, it should be one year unless there is a complete contraindication. Uh, can we? Continue post 12 months? Yes, we can. And this is seen by so many trials. The major two trials was the DPT and the Pegasus trial with the lower dose of Ticagrelor. And can we stop very prematurely? Yes, in very high bleeding risk patients, but again, this is not really recommended. And Mokin issue back with flow charts. This is how we see patients that are undergoing medical treatment at least 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy, low mafish high bleeding risk. One to three months, not so good. It's a class 2A for high bleeding risk because of the outweighing of the risk here of bleeding versus the benefit of antithrombotics. So this is a really important thing. Post PCI, we know that clopidogrel has only been studied, it's the only one has been studied in PCI. And this is really important and it has so many data, it's a class 1A. But if you have a high-risk patient with higher thrombosis, long stents, bifurcation, long lesions, here ticagrelor can be used. It's a class 2B, but in stable patients, it can be used in higher. And the commonest use was here was in the bioabsorbable vascular scaffold. And Arif Abbott stopped it, stopped selling it. Like in the increased stent thrombosis in the first 30 days of the bioabsorbable vascular scaffold, let the investigators use ticagrelor in the first month. Can it stand thrombosis very high in the first month? So here, a newer indication for ticagrelor if the patient is at high thrombotic risk. 
this is really important and uh, if you have a stent you can give uh, the dual antiplatelet therapy for six months preferably a year but six months is enough whether it's bare metal whether it's drug eluting but if you have a bioabsorbable vascular scaffold it should be 12 months this is really important because bioabsorbable vascular scaffolds have a higher stent thrombosis rates of course and weigh a bleeding risk versus the benefit of the thrombotic risk not to go to details because we don't have a lot of time but definitely we can extend these 12 months using ticagrelor or clopidogrel if in certain patients they require this and it's a class 2b to extend below 12 months cardiac surgery do they benefit from giving dual antiplatelet therapy they benefit a lot we didn't know that but a lot of data from the previous studies and even the newer Plato study for Ticagrelor also showed that they improve. It's a class one. Um, should it be given for a long term, short term? Well, if you have a high bleeding risk, don't give it too long. It can be given to up to six months, maybe shorter if you require it. It really improves uh, vein thrombosis, saphenous vein graft thrombosis, and this is really important. But if you have a stable patient with not a high bleeding risk, it's good. Can we extend this? Yes. Also, clopidogrel and ticagrelor were studied, and prasugrel also in the DAPT study, if there is no high bleeding risk. This is really important. And the graft occlusion rates diminish very nicely when giving dual antiplatelet therapy in those going cardiac bypass surgery. I have a patient. He's on clopidogrel. He took clopidogrel. He was rushed to uh, CCU because they don't have an on-site uh, PCI or 24-7 PCI, what to do? Do I switch him? Do I just uh, let him enter the cath lab? Well, there's only one study that shows that switching here is beneficial. And it's in the acute setting. It was in the PLATO study. The PLATO study was the only study with randomized showing a good amount of switching. 50% or 40 to 50% of patients that were randomized to ticagrelor in the PLATO study were already preloaded with clopidogrel. Had the Hayud, there's a lot of bleeding risk. No, there was no bleeding risk. There's an improved in stent thrombosis, there's an improved in ischemic and major adverse cardiac events. All other switches are postulations of car, tari. I can switch from ticagrelor to clopidogrel, say if I have an allergy to ticagrelor, yes. But always in the acute setting, load the patient. If I have a patient who is preloaded by clopidogrel, I have to load him again with ticagrelor, no matter what the timing is. This is very important to reduce cardiac events. Okay? During the chronic setting, really, there is no much data. We only switch if we have problems with the drug at hand, but otherwise, usually, there is no, there is no major randomized control studies showing that switching here is of benefit. Triple therapy maybe 15, 10 to 15 percent of our patients, maybe atrial fibrillation, the aging population. And here, the only really strict recommendation here is for clopidogrel. Ticagrelor was used in uh, the Pioneer study, but again, still clopidogrel is the safest because there are so many things we should take into consideration to avoid bleeds. Lower the aspirin level. Lower your INR if you're using warfarin. Use the lower doses of NOAX if you have that. And if possible, at certain patients with a higher bleeding risk, use the less potent P2Y12, which is clopidogrel. Here, benefit of less bleeding sometimes outweighs the benefit of thrombosis. And after 12 months, the newer data say we can stay on oral anticoagulants alone. Which we have to triple therapy or we have to use warfarin, clopidogrel, or NOAX clopidogrel applicator. So here is another thing. Another breakthrough was non-cardiac surgery. And have seen chemistiem is boa. No, it's according to the drug. Prasugrel seven days to be stopped before surgery. Clopidogrel chemistiem. Ticagrelor teletiem. Rapid onset of action, rapid offset of action. So this is the recommendation. The gidida di mohemagidda. Uh, bleeding, of course, is really important. Like, and I will go through it quickly because there's a lot to say. But even in the severest of bleedings, you consider stoppage of dual antiplatelet therapy. 
oral anticoagulation, if it's present, is really important to stop. Like in a dual antiplatelet therapy outweighs sometimes the risk of the severe bleeding. Okay? And if I best slide one by the Isnaka Dr. Ayman, if it's possible. It's a, it's, a, it's a big thing. There are so many new things, but the points to remember, there are benefits and risks for dual antiplatelet therapy. The duration can really improve certain outcomes in certain patients. The bleeding strategy or decreasing bleeding is really important when we see triple therapy is very important. P2Y12 selection for acute chronic syndromes, we have a benefit definitely of ticagrelor, prasugrel versus clopidogrel. Yemkin is safety profile that clopidogrel for triple therapy is better or it's more uh, investigated. The timing, another thing that I could not have the time to talk to you about, give it early on, give it later on, can feel Atlantic study. There are so many data saying that you can give this pre hospital or even in hospital. There's not a huge difference here. Stable coronary artery disease patients, mainly with clopidogrel, yes, but you can give ticagrelor and prasugrel in the newer guidelines if you have a high thrombotic risk or high ischemic burden. With Kalam Ba'al Gidid, you had Salna in the Mishlazim, Law Anais, a shorten a dual antiplatelet therapy in Anastam and bare metal stance. We can use drug eluting stance. And of course, there's one study on uh, the biofreedom uh, stent, which is uh, uh, an absorbable polymer one month, but it's a class 2B, that I can stop dual antiplatelet therapy after one month, but it's a class 2B. And this is the earliest that I can enter a patient into non-cardiac surgery after the stent. Stable coronary artery disease patient treated with cabbage or acute chronic syndrome treated with cabbage benefit from dual antiplatelet therapy. And of course, don't remember, dual antiplatelet therapy reduces mortality, reduces MACE in ACS patients. And those with oral anticoagulation, it goes back to number two, always benefits of thrombosis versus the hazards of bleeding. Thank you.